Hi. Yes. So good to be here with you. How are you? Beautiful. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Happy Monday. Thank you. Yes, my sun is going down, and I think you guys are just getting into the thick of your day. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually in Venice, so it's 8 o'clock, but a lot of followers are on the East Coast, so kind of like midday. Yeah, yeah. Did you have a good weekend? Yes, it was sublime. Thank you. Nice. Uh, well, thank you. Three... Sorry? I had two of my three kids with Mother's Day. Oh, so, so sweet. That's amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you so, so much for taking the time today. Obviously, um, I mean, you have been one of my greatest teachers for so long um, since I started this journey when I was 21. And now we're here today. So it's kind of like a full circle moment for me to be here chatting with you. And I'm, I'm just so excited to pick your brain and to have uh, my followers and your followers hear from you because you have so much to share. So thank you so much. Well, it's, on, it's wonderful that you started so young. I was yeah. when I started it and it makes all the difference. I was 25 when I started and, you know, to, to get in on the cleansing journey early on is such a gift. Totally, such a gift. And all, I think we have that mutual mission to just help as many people as possible. So to kind of come along the journey with us. So, um, it's never too late. It's just a matter of, it's yeah. nice to, you know, of, to avoid the accumulation that would come with not knowing how to, how to operate the process at that stage, but it still can be turned around at any moment in time. So totally, totally amazing. Well, um, I obviously wanted to take some time just up front to have you introduce yourself. I have a couple of just basic questions as well. Um, I can introduce myself as well for, for your followers who don't know me. Um, and then I do have a bunch of questions that followers submitted. And then, of course, we could leave time for some live questions as well, if that works for you. Um, yeah. yeah, so I would love for you to share more about you, your journey, um, everything that you do today as well. Okay, I'll try to keep it concise. Um, yeah. Basically, at, I got into this very seriously 22 years ago. And, um, but before that, I was very sick. And I, the way I like to put it is, any ailment that be, could befall the, the typical female, I was contending with. And it was awful. And I actually wanted to leave this world. I didn't know why anyone thought it was a good thing and why life was a good thing because I just wanted it out. On paper, I had everything. I ticked all the boxes. I'd gone to all the right schools. I was, you know, like everything I was, was just as it should have been. But why was I so miserable to the point of actually wanting to leave this life? Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't know that until um, I actually, uh, against doctor's orders, <laughs> went to uh, went for my first colonic and with guilt his clinic. I miss and, him. Oh, he's the best. Um, so, so basically, um, having gone ahead with my session, I called her a therapist, one of Gil's clinicians back in those days, um, my mind was completely blown. And the sensation I had afterward of even from that one session, the openness, the clarity, the degree to which that opened me up, um, I was forever changed. And I, my life, my life would, I never, I didn't to what extent, but my life would never be the same after that session, after that day, 22 years ago. So um, within a few short weeks, you know, maybe maximum six to eight weeks, my whole physicality shifted dramatically. So I always carried extra weight, mostly in my thighs, um, you know, had terrible body loathing. I had so much cellulite to the point where I remember in a Benetton dressing room when I was about 18 at, at NYU, and I just broke down in tears. I couldn't believe the quantity of cellulite staring back at me from that dressing room mirror. And I was so devastated. I thought, how am I going to live my whole life, like hating my body and feeling this way, not being able to, to wear things or feel good in, in my body and myself? And um, obviously, we want to be able to feel good in our body no matter what the size or what the shape or how much cellulite or whatever. But there's, you know, there's something that creates a problem unnatural and that is the accumulation of waste over the mm. years so time in those 18 years i took enough rubbish that didn't leave my body that created that. so you know yes of course embrace your body 
no matter what. Love yourself no matter what. Love yourself. I mean, I remember my mother um, said to me once, I used to get really upset about my body, like super, super upset. And I, mm -hmm. and, and I, I was complaining about my cellulite, my heavy legs, which I felt like were tree trunks. And she said to me, Natalia, just be grateful you have legs. So at that point, that, that landed on me. Like, you know what? That is a really good point, you know? So mm. I, you know, I tried to take that to heart um, in various ways. But, um, but the point is, given the fact that we need to be okay with our bodies regardless, there are things that don't need to be holding us down, holding us back, and keeping us apart. So let's do what we can to remove that obstruction, those barriers, to our fullest expression of the divine, our fullest reflection of the divine. So to get back to your question, um, the transformation was was dramatic, and that was the first couple of months. And then with every passing month, there was a, a greater and greater upgrade. It's exponential. So you know, I'm in this. I'm in a being now, probably 47, that is so much stronger, has so, such greater integrity, particularly um, neurologically, in every way. It's, you know, it, is, it operates far better than it did when I was in my teens, when I was, in my teens mm -hmm. when I was suffering from symptoms, which were, I mean, just, just to give you the, the, the laundry list of them, a hand, um, acne, I mentioned the cellulite, uh, extra weight, chronic headaches, chronic bladder infections, chronic bronchitis, um, general malaise, and um, anxiety, and, you know, I, I didn't have much to give. Now I have everything to give. And then, you know, whether whether oh, brain fog, I had terrible brain fog, um, just just so many. Things. You don't realize how, the the low grade that you're living on until the upgrade comes about, and they're like, oh wow, that's the that's the uh, the shift. That's the oh. uh, that's the difference between you know what you could be feeling. So so at that point. I was um, I was working in the corporate world. I was doing PR uh, for a very big company, and I realized that this is my calling. I had to leave that world, and um, and just I wanted to show as many people what they could actually be, how wonderful they could feel, how beautiful they could look, how radiantly energized they could be moving through life. So, mm -hmm. I, just, I mean, I believed. I no, I didn't believe like, it wasn't about. Myself. I believed in the work. I believed in in, in the the science behind the removal of waste matter and mm -hmm. of it and that that would work on our body because we are all the same in the sense that you know how we respond to the removal of waste and that mm -hmm. was really so you know it's, it's natural law it has nothing to do with me i'm just a conduit for a message totally. that's natural law so so incredible it's so interesting to hear because my like i went through a very similar kind of experience where I was working in the corporate world for a tech company, a hyper growth tech startup. And then I took a venture capital job. And um, many years prior, when I graduated from college, when I was 21, I saw a naturopath who sort of lived by these principles that we live by and changed my life in a matter of two weeks. And then as I dug into that cleansing life, I started seeing Gil, all these things. I realized that it was my calling, but I was like too scared to take the leap for a very long time. And over COVID, I took this venture capital job and then felt, you know, something felt wrong and off. And I knew that I just had to take that leap. Um, and so here we are today and I became a holistic health coach and now kind of live by these principles and try to help others do the same. So it's kind of interesting how we've kind of been through a similar journey and obviously your book and um, everything that you've shared when I was like 21, 22 completely changed my life. So I was now, I'm now 30. So like eight years ago. Yeah. Which is, which is crazy. Um, tell me a little bit about like your sort of foundational principles for like nutrition or cleansing detoxification. Like what are, what are a few principles that you live by and sort of promote or want to share with people? Okay, I would say there's two main things. If people can walk away with this, they'll have they'll be sitting with gold. Um, mm -hmm. The first is that we get better not by what we put in our body per se. I know that people will be like, what? what? What are you talking about? I'll explain. But by what we remove from our body. So mm -hmm. remove the obstruction. the obstruction is the problem. So when if we can get rid of this obstruction, then the circuitry 
conduct the life force energy again. The life force energy is the intelligence. It knows what to do. It's the know-how. So the body goes into a huge upgrade when those, uh, the obstruction is removed. Now, most mm -hmm. people focus on what they are putting in. They think, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all these nutrients into my body. But your body is kind of concrete. It might well be for all the obstruction that's in there. Get the concrete. Totally. And then maybe some of the stuff that, you know, then, then you won't have to worry about chasing down nutrients, though, because, you know, you're going to eat a cucumber and, you know, you're going to have life force. So it's not going to matter. But more importantly, your body's already conducting. It's in without nutrients. So you're going to have natural energy even before you put anything into your body. Um, but then you can mm. something, something with high vitality, high voltage. It's all about voltage. Everything's about vibration and voltage. So when, when the body's open and clear, it will conduct that voltage put in. So, for example... Um, if, if somebody who's clean cell, who's been doing this for a while, goes and, and gets a green juice versus someone who, who's going to get a green juice that has a sense of obstruction, they're both going to have completely different experiences with that green juice. The one whose cells yeah. are clean and free of obstruction, that green juice is going to go in like, um, you know, like you're, you're charging up your electric vehicle or something, or you're putting your, your fuel in the car, and like it's going to immediately feel the vibrational uplift. Whereas mm -hmm. the blockage the the juice will go in it won't reach uh, it won't really get into the depth of the body the way it, it could there may or may not be a big uplift in fact there might be a bit of a um a negative response a bit of first uh, gas pressure um some nausea headaches so it's it, we have to be very careful about when we put what into the body based on our healing on our journey it's never the case of, well, this is very alkaline, this is very green, so more is better. It's, well, mm. where as more might be far worse for you than, you know, than, what, than having something as simple as, like, go back to the cucumber. cucumber. Um, I prefer the cucumber juice to the celery juice. That's not the other day. But, um, yeah, that's – oh, so that, that was one thing. So the, the, the rem, rem, taking anything out of it and putting what you put in. Of course, mm -hmm. don't – body put clean foods in your body eat your water drink your food. that means that you know your food should be high water content and mm -hmm. drink vegetable juice or green juice preferably um but the other thing what was the other thing um oh yes the other thing of course the the quintessential equation for cleansing nobody should ever get into cleansing without comprehending it is the essential thing wait for it it is awake release we don't release anything if we don't awake first and we don't ever want to awaken that which so that's the key awaken and release so how do we awaken we awaken with the alkaline substances they have to be hydrating uh, hydrate water high water content alkaline substances so taking powders don't have any life force so i never recommend oh, um, thank so you <laughs> any of my followers listening know that i despise powder so i'm very happy that you're saying this yeah, there are other things to do if you're traveling. You can always take frozen wheatgrass trays with you. There's so many options. You don't have to do powders. And take frozen juice if you want to. I take my green juice off the plane all the time. Get a doctor's note. They'll sort you out. Problems. Your constitutional right to travel um, if you want to. There's so many ways around things. You can you, you mm -hmm. know, People go for the powders. It's really unnecessary. Other than there's a convenience, but ultimately not convenient if it's not doing what you want it to be doing. Um, so, each, so that goes back to... Um, Awaken, release. Release, what does that mean? Release means that when you awaken this, this sludge and crud and ancient old accumulated waste matter, you lifted it up and out of the cells and tissues with your leafy green, with your green juice, with your all the alkaline high water content. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, you've done that, but if you don't get it out of the body, it's pointless. Okay. You're going to going to re-intoxicate yourself and you've done all that work for nothing and you've bought all those groceries and, and, and prepared all that beautiful food for nada so mm -hmm. what we want to make sure that once we awake it we get it on the door and we get that primarily through the bowel through the, uh, totally. the and it's it's very helpful because it's a it's a it's basically an elimination container and it wants to move these things um, very very dry the waste in there is very dry very dry is not kinetic. It can't. There will be no muscular contractions if the waste is dry. This is why people need to stop focusing on how much water they can drink by mouth, and figure out how much they can drink the call it drinking up the wazoo. Um, mm. That's where that's where the dryness is, and you can drink all the water in the world, and it's not going to hydrate large intestine. 
unless your large intestine is rehydrated, it's not going to move that much fat on its own. And that's why people are constipated. It's years and years and years. And this is, and I'll, I'll stop after this, but what the other really important thing people need to know is that only about half, if you're lucky, about half of everything they've consumed has left their body. Now, you don't have to be a big person to be holding a face map. You can be, totally. you know, size double zero and still have all that accumulation of waste. It's just probably going to be more in your, um, in your vital organs than stuffed away from it. So when you see people with, you know, the, the, um, pockets of fat all over the body, under the arms, under the chin, that's, that's the body making weight is kept away from the vital organs. So Hold it's on. not a bad in that sense. Um, if you're thin and you're not these kind of pockets of waste, it means that that waste is still there in and among your vital organs. So that's actually in many ways more dangerous. Um, but both cases, we can very, very readily, easily, effectively remove waste simply by the awaken and release method. Totally, totally. Speaking the truth, I love it. Um, those are really principles that I live by as well. So I'm so happy that you're sharing that with everyone. Um, talking about like awakening, I think that was like a big question that people had. Like, what food should I eat if I'm trying to? cleanse and detoxify like what what foods will sort of awaken this built up matter in my system okay so this is really important i'm going to tell you what they are but i want you to keep in mind part two of that, the, that is to make sure that you don't overdo because if you're awakening a lot of waste you're not releasing then you're really uh, what creep literally okay. awakened all so so just because so this goes back to that, that point i'm going to tell you what the alkaline substances are they're there for a I'm going to get too much sun here. It's a beautiful, <laughs> very, very bright. I want to get just enough. Um, I'm terrible with light. Forgive me if lighting is bad, but I'm just, I don't have one of those, I, I just hate lights and those things. Anyway, no one day. Okay. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so the, what, what awakens the waste is alkaline substances that are high water content. So all of your green vegetables, anything that mm -hmm. has be high vitality, high vitality, um, voltage, alkalinity, all mean the same thing. They're all going to be the same. Mm -hmm. so your your watercress, your spinach, your um, arugula, they're all, you know, if, if it's a dense green, it has a high alkalinity quotient, which means it's going to have the propensity to awaken a lot, especially if it's more, it still has its water content in it. Now, uh, there's a place for cooked foods. On a second. So whether they're cooked or raw or juiced, well, let me say this. If, whether they're juiced or raw, they're going to have the ability to awaken that waste from being set of tissue. But if you're thinking to yourself, oh, that sounds great. I'm going to do nothing to the things. You're going to be in really big trouble because you know what's going to happen? You're going to waste waste, and it's not going to have an exit. So it's going to try and come out, which is your largest organ, second largest limited organ. So it's going to wind up with terrible workouts, have a headache. You're going to probably have flu-like symptoms. You're going to be bloated or you can't leave it. Unless you have lines enough colonics or enemas to remove the awaken, don't over awaken. It's unnecessary because even though waste, waste and even though you get better to the degree to which you release, you don't have to release at super speeds. The body upgrades really quickly once some of this was shown the door. So for example, my upgrades came with one colonic every three weeks. Mm -hmm. Maybe one, and then I went once every three weeks, and then I went to once um, every two weeks, and just kept progressing that way. Um, and it, even it, when I was doing once every three weeks, the upgrades were incredible. So mm -hmm. don't overawaken waste that you cannot. That is a really, really key thing. And and maybe just play that on repeat a bunch of times because it's really hard for, especially those of us who are ambitious about achieving what we set out to do. We think you know it's very hard to hear that. It's like I'm just yeah. going to do it all right now. Just let the body do its thing. It took you a long time to put that, that to accumulate that waste. Let your body get it out at its pace, and then you'll feel great as you detox. So when people talk about these Hertzheimer re reactions and how, oh, I'm having detox symptoms, I'm like, well, you should have come to see me because you wouldn't be having detox symptoms if you came to see me because we would have made mm -hmm. sure that you were releasing that which you were awakening. So you should totally. not, not be having detox symptoms. If they're clearing the bowel and not over cleansing, they're doing it at a pace that's respectful to where they are in the process, there will be nothing but bliss. If there's mm -hmm. an imbalance along the line, there'll be trouble. Totally, totally. It's funny because 
I did a live with Mike Perrine, who I'm sure you know, last week. Um, and he was telling me when he went through his transformation, you know, he made a very drastic shift very quickly. And he went through a month of insane detox symptoms where he felt incredibly sick and unwell. So because I think he went from eating like burgers and fries to, you know, eating raw food. So um, yeah, I totally agree with you. It has to, you kind of have to meet people where they're at. Like someone who's eating mostly healthy will have a different transition than someone who's eating burgers for every meal, right? So it's all about meeting people where they're at and kind of what their starting point is. Um, yeah, transition, transition is key. You've got to figure out and respect your own transition. Totally, totally, exactly. Um, and like, I know you mentioned you kind of shouldn't have symptoms for, for, clean, for detoxifying, but like, what are some symptoms that you see people have if they are kind of, their body is going through that detoxification process um, and they're kind of clearing out their system? Well, I mean, if they're not, if they're, if they're not bowel cleansing, they're going to have a lot of symptoms. They can run anything from, um, you know, like I said, headaches, uh, like symptoms, bloat, uh, joint pains, toothache, uh, boil popping out. I mean, there can be anything. This, this is really noxious, gross stuff. It's been accumulating in the body for a long time. Yeah. The body is highly intelligent. It's constantly mm -hmm. trying to exit things. It gets tired of trying to find So if, when a child is having fever and, um, and you know, winds up with strep throat and as a, a teenager, they have acne and they have migraines, and the, the, if they're not going to, you know, heed those, um, those signals, those alarm bells, and they're going to continue to suppress those alarm bells with headache medication and, you know, I got careful not to name brands, I've got to catch myself, um, but, but uh, cold and flu suppressants, all these things you guys know about, um, all the pharmaceutical drugs that would suppress symptoms, if they're going to use those things and suppress it, what's going to happen? It's going to come out, it's going to scream even louder the next time. That's why mm -hmm. you have to have a cold and a flu that eventually you know, become strep throat or uh, cyanitis and eventually pneumonia. It's like, it, it's just going to escalate because the, body's, the body gets weaker and weaker. The more that you suppress the truth in the body, the more the body doesn't have its, a, it's, a, its voice. And every cell has a voice. All the tissues, they have, vo they have this connected um, or unified voice. And when you tell the body, you're not going to listen to it. You don't want to hear it. Well, I mean, how do you think that makes the body feel? It doesn't want to think oh. anymore anymore it's not heard it's going to be you know diminished and and discarded and disrespected so at a certain point it's just going to go inward you're going to lose your life force one and one will lose their life force and then it's sort of that the rot quotient which is basically what I'm talking about for a long time i had a hard time using our word the rot word because i thought oh my gosh people are going to just cringe when they hear the word rot and they hear like but that's what it is you can't have it is rotting in your body and the body not start to smell, to putrefy, to have, um, you know, big, what do you call it, like bo boils and, and it's of, of skin. Um, and we see this in, of course, you know, whether it's rosacea or, uh, you mm -hmm. know, or um, psoriasis, e eczema, mm -hmm. this is the fungus. The fungus is coming from the rot. It's, a, it's an infestation. It's a septic system now. And we mm -hmm. can fix it. Them, but we have to understand that's what's happening. You know, we would never mm -hmm. leave in the, the you know in the in the house and not take the garbage out. It would start to smell. The walls would start to rot. Disgusting. So what? But why? Why wouldn't we put that together in our own bodies? Because we're told that the body detoxifies itself. Anytime anyone in allopathic in the allopathic world says, you know, um, or, or in, in our culture says, but excuse me, should I be detoxing? The allopathic response is, no, your body discards its own matter it, it, it detoxifies naturally you don't need to do all these cleanses. now having said that i don't believe in doing organ cleanses like a liver cleanse or a gallbladder i believe in organism cleansing and when we organism cleanse, the awaken release technique does the whole organism as one unit and that's what you want to focus on because then everything else of course mm -hmm. goes to an on one specific totally totally so tell me a little bit about um, that sort of release or that cleansing, those sort of waste management specialists that like help you detoxify. Like I know you have the enlightener, um, enemas, um, do you recommend them? Do you recommend colonics? How often? 
Um, yeah, tell us a little about that. Yeah, so I mean, this this is subject matter we need to speak about as readily as anything else. You know, mm -hmm. there's about things like supplements or juicing stuff. But we have to be as comfortable talking about waste management. I'm glad. Like, so there's uh, there's professional colon hydrotherapists who are the heroes of our day, and yeah, you, that's that's brilliant. So I prefer the Woods Gravity Method. That's the you know, the, it would be the Rolls Royce of professional colonics because um, you all you have is it's it's not pushing water into the body the water is about five feet above your head you're lying down and it just gently comes back into the body um, and then it's simultaneous release which is a closed system it means that your the, the the water is entering you through the speculum into your system your body and the, and the waste is being released at the same time simultaneous mm -hmm. flow that affects um, but there's also, there are systems that are, um, the, well, there, there's a pressurized system, which pushes the water the body. Those aren't ideal. Having said that, a really great therapist who's very much in tune with the body of the, their um, client can still create a great result with that. So it's not you know, a, a, a categorical no-go zone. It just really depends. Um, and then there are the water, the open systems where I, I've never, I'm not a big fan of somebody some temporary relief. That's great. I mean, if you're releasing, that's always a good thing, but um, it's not going to be as efficient or as, um, as sort of um, mm -hmm. as, um, as some other methods. So then, then you have your home medical bag, which I recommend the CARA, C-A-R-A, and then the bag. It's literally one is the fountain syringe and um, and it sounds kind of weird fountain syringe but all it means is that you can keep on refilling the enema bag as you as you go as opposed to the hot, the water bottle ones where you have to keep on opening it and putting the water in and closing it and turning back upside down which is kind of a pain. um you can use a bucket too i mean that's fine um and the same idea is that it's open and then of course i've got the enlightener which is my home method that is i call it the millennium that's what it is. The rest of your you're sorted. You have to make another appointment. You, I mean, you, I, I do like for anyone who is able to go see a professional therapist for a whole handful of series of sessions. Ideally, twelve sessions would be great because then you get the sense of what it feels like to have that simultaneous flow and the water entering you that way, and it doesn't feel mm -hmm. like your facility when you actually receive your enlightenment. But uh, in this day and age, with COVID and, and, and there are a few kind of therapists, sadly. Um, we do have a colon therapy directory on my website. I always like to take a look and see if they can find somebody in their area. Amazing. Um, it's just so great to have that kind of care. It's way better than enema, but if you don't have but a home enema, a home enema will still go a long way to helping you. So, um, you know, again, if you get good at using home enema, by all means, Use it, but remember that simultaneous flow—the water going in when the waste is going out simultaneously—is always going to be superior to taking in water, holding, 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 and then releasing, because it's just. One hundred percent. But but the but the bottom line, what people should know is that don't be afraid of water entering you, because it's just water. Number one and number two, that waste matter is acidic; it's eating your tissue. That's way more. Dangerous. To have waste sitting on your internal tissue in your colon, it's. Mm -hmm. it's going to turn it's going to weaken your intestine that's why people have colonoscopy bags when they're 50 and 60 and that's totally. why they have partial colonectomy it's, there's just so because that waste is an option so don't be afraid of the water and don't be afraid of it but if there's anything you're concerned about be concerned about the waste that's sitting in your tissue totally totally i think the the kind of the point here is like the removal of obstruction, going back to your point earlier, I think, you know, that that formula in Arnold Eric's book, um, you know, kind of like removing the obstruction to increase your vitality. That's the whole point. It's like, how how can we do that? And these these met these different methods support that, that process. Um, and again, I think it's one of those topics that people feel uncomfortable talking about, but it's important for us to destigmatize talking about these things because they are so so critical to someone 
getting better and healing themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, tell me about, you mentioned you don't really believe in like liver flushes. I, I have the same philosophy as you. Um, and people always ask me about how do I flood, how do I cleanse my liver? What liver flush should I do? And so on and so forth. Um, so I'd love to hear you talk more about that because there were a lot of questions around kind of liver detoxification and, and you know, herbs that support that and so on and so forth. Sure. I mean, the thing is that you're going to end your liver when you get the waste out of your intestine. So it's like saying, let me, let me clean out that little waste. Let's focus on the little waste in the bathroom. You know, that little one thing that you have in the bathroom to, to put your, uh, your, your um, little thing, <laughs> your tissue. But let's not take the garbage out. Like, you know, if you have a choice, you take the, the, you know, the big garbage out, little garbage out. So taking the focusing on the liver cleanse is like, it, it, so, but, um, you know, just know if you move big waste, the liver is not going to be a problem. The liver is going to be able to, to wake up and again, because the vitality in the body is hard. So the blood's going to get cleaner. So, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the liver, the kidneys, all, all our vital organs are filters as well. We're trying to filter out all the stuff that doesn't belong in us. They never were in, intended, though, to contend with so much filtering mm -hmm. totally. filter. and the big filter needs to be cleansed and then the other filters will have a much easier time catching up and they'll cleanse easily but even like you know the coffee enemas the idea being that you know the bile duct gets dilated and and the, and the, the, the scale the stagnant the bile from the liver can be cleared well let's just I mean, bile's a big thing but it's it's still nowhere near as important it's a, it's a drop in the bucket so compared to mm -hmm. what upgrade when you get the waste out of the large intestine there's so much waste there and this is the other reason it's so important to focus on the colon once you release the waste that's filled up your your large intestine you're creating a vacuum this is one of those like secrets of cleansing is i mean so i want to share like this is this is magical this is like the mystical school of nutrition right here right now okay you release that which is sitting in the large intestine you create a vacuum what does the vacuum do it sucks that which is around it into right so if if we understand that half of what we take it into our bodies left, we know that nesting throughout the whole body not just around the intestine but it's permeated the entire organism right into the brain which is why we have all the, the, the degenerative mm -hmm. so that that way eating away at everything so every time we have a big release through the large intestine we have that vacuum as a result that calls toward it another whole group, another whole uh, red um, exodus of mm -hmm. waste. So if you can repeat that process over and over and over and over again, and not be afraid of thinking, "Oh my God, I'm going to become addicted to colonics," or um, "Is yeah. too much," or "But I just had a like, why should I need more?" It's because there's so much waste. We're talking about, you know, decades and decades and decades of waste. Mm -hmm. But the point is that if anybody wants to experience the highest levels of vitality in their cycle, they can simply by repeating the process because the vacuum is going to continuously give you the opportunity to go deeper into the body to gather more and more of this waste. Mm -hmm. That's magic. And when people, the people that get that and put that to task are the ones who have the nirvana experience with the ones who will never get it because and I don't know in a mean way, you just won't feel it. It's not, it's, it's if your instrument is coated in waste, if it's coated in crud, if your harp strings are coated in crud, you're not going to be able to make a sound and play the instrument. You're not going to have, it, you it won't, it, it's like an, like any string instrument. It doesn't make a sound if it has crud on the strings or a violin, whatever it is. So we're mm -hmm. the these naughties, these meridians, where the and so how can we expect this instrument to hum to have that visceral thing that is real that will happen if you know you had it you probably had it up until you were maybe four five six years old and when you have the experience of releasing a whole lot of waste you have memory suddenly you're like oh my gosh i remember feeling this when i was you know seven totally. and that's what we're getting back and we don't have to live a life where we're declining the more we release mm -hmm. the waste age be relevant totally 
And I think feeling good is the biggest motivator for people, like reconnecting with that feeling of, you know, people, I feel like people always say they want to like lose weight. Um, but I encourage people to flip that and think about how they want to feel and how they do feel when they start this process. Because when you start to feel energetic and you feel the high bright vibration and you feel more reconnected to yourself, that's the biggest motivator to keep going, not losing weight. Losing weight will be a byproduct of that. But just feeling your best and waking up with so much vitality each and every day is what motivates people. Um, and then they, you know, they go back to maybe not feeling as good and they notice it more because they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I used to feel this way all the time. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's really important to, I think, for people to really focus on how they feel when they start this process and um, how they're able to go about their day with so much more ease. Um, yes. yeah, I totally agree with everything. So that is everything. And people don't even know how good they can feel. It's, it's impossible to really yeah. know what. And so it's, it's, a, it's like feeling God. That, that's the kind of vibratory resonance that you will feel. Mm -hmm. Good. You feel God. Totally. Totally. 100%. 100%. Um, what are your thoughts on, I had a lot of questions around like thoughts around animal products grains, starches. Um, I know we talked a little bit about, you know, these high water content alkaline foods, but would love to hear your thoughts on these other categories and how they how they fit in. Yeah, well, look, from from a, um, a cruelty standpoint, from a what's good for the earth standpoint, um, you know, might be stay away from animal products. Um, from mm. a, I would say that they can have a place so, for example, um, most everybody needs to remove the fungal load. So starches and sugars mm. are going to maintain that fungal load. I mean, so will cow cheeses. So will uh, so will animal products to a certain extent. But if if you can have some wild fish and vegetables and stay away from the pasta and the rice and things, you're going to get better and get cleaner. A lot the the starches. Barring, say, a handful of grains like heft, millet, quinoa, buckwheat, spelt to a certain degree, well prepared, um, whole, there there can be a, a place for those. Uh, everything else, I pretty much just pretend it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, starches are are really hard on the body. They're not made for consumption. Um, they they were created except we do, if we talk about like wild grains, wild grains and stuff kind of rice it's, it's more like a vegetable um, but these um the starches we started growing it with the event of the revolution a thousand years ago which wasn't that long ago by you know the extent of, of, of you know how long humans have been around and um and so before that we we're eating wild and wild things are starchy it's just that this is part of the problem i have with fruits so you know if i i don't i don't encourage consumption of a for most people in most situations, because we're talking about fruit that's not the fruit from 200 years ago. 200 years mm -hmm. ago, it was diminutive in size. It wasn't mm -hmm. super we had sour. Our palates were different, though. We enjoyed those sorts of things a lot more. Um, now, mm -hmm. you know, for a kind of a gratification that's very unnatural. Too. So, the hybridization of fruits and the, the prematurely and in sitting in truck. I mean, I personally eat fruit. I do it a certain way under very certain circumstances. I, I love it. It's hard not to love fruit. Who doesn't love fruit? But mm -hmm. you've got to the body first. Um, if you find toward um, these things, you know, you want to stay away from them. Yeah. You know you have fungus and, and candida if you have psoriasis, if you have, if you have any um, inflammatory skin ailment. Um, you know, you can that you do, but you can take some herbs to help with that. But the bowel cleansing and the change of diet are essential for it. Um, I don't count myself in because I do consume goat cheese, goat mm -hmm. cheese. Um, and I don't like labels anyway. I find that they're just very yeah. it's unnecessary. You know, it, have a clean diet. You know whether your diet's clean or not. You know, don't. But you know, it's it's great to. I, I love the term plant based. Plant based doesn't have yeah. That. Um, you know, like it puts you in a cell and you label you like, yeah. 
know, it's, it's really much more like, as a general rule, this is what I do. That's a good place to be. I like that energy. Um, yeah. um, but if everyone can focus on, if you want to get well, have a vegetable centric diet, which is mostly green centric. So if we think vegetable centric and then up the ante on that a little bit, so it's the, the vegetable quotient is mostly green you can still do all the other vegetables, you know, bake your beets and, and cook your carrots and, and, you know, go to town with your parsnips and, and your, and your acorn squash and your pumpkin and your butternut, whatever you want. But know that that green centric approach is going to make sure you're really on the right track. Don't focus on raw because it's not essential. Essential is the removal of the waste matter. So if, if, if you've um, upped the ante enough on your dietetics, so you're not having packaged processed foods anymore, you're having a green juice most days, you're having a, a raw mm -hmm. salad one, at least once a day, maybe you're having two meals a day, you're having green juice plus a raw salad in the middle of the day and a, a cooked meal at the end of the day, that's great. So mm -hmm. We'll have any raw food, in which case blended foods are great and cooked vegetables are great. And just keep that weight moving out of the body and the, the ailments keeping you from more raw, um, and when I say raw, I'm talking about raw vegetables, not raw fancy food. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. that go away. So the diverticulitis, the bowel issues, all this the stuff that most people have today, leaky gut syndrome, that makes even chewing lettuce tough for some people, a lot totally. of people. Um, that's going to be ameliorated. That's going to be um, remediated. The body does the remediation. The body does the healing. So I'm going to call myself a healer. I might be a healing catalyst because I'm able to, and to, to give some guidance so that someone can put into action these things. But even there, mind, not the healing, the body. We create the conditions and the body does mm -hmm. the healing. So we don't even mm -hmm. have to worry about healing ourselves. We have to just focus on what do I need to do to create the conditions so my body can self-heal. And that's what will happen Totally, a vegetable-centric, green-centric diet. To, you know, have lots of vegetables. Cooking vegetables for most people is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's really important to have that in there because it creates gratification, a warmth, the comfort food. You know, that's why I like the goat cheese. I, you, you make a, a bowl of piping hot spinach in vegetable broth with some crumbled uh, goat's cheese and I, something that tastes is, is, you know, a packaged processed food. It's a simple, quick, easy dinner. It's inexpensive. You know, the, all these things, they don't, it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be hard to do, to make. Totally. It should be, the, way, the way you eat when you get things right, it should be more convenient, less expensive, more delicious, totally. more and ultimately result in your body turning into gold. Totally. I love what you're saying about being vegetable centric and not having labels. I think that's something I've preached for quite some time. I, I actually, fun fact, I, I got, people always ask me how I got the handle that plant-based gal. And I did it back in 2013 because, um, which was long, almost 10 years ago. Um, and I really, even at that time when I was 21, really focus on being plant-based instead of vegan um, because I felt that it was more achievable and attainable to just focus on eating more vegetables, eating more plants. And I too, like I have fish on occasion. I have maybe a little raw goat cheese on occasion. I have an egg on occasion. Um, and I really like to emphasize that being mostly plant-focused and plant-forward is what will allow the body to heal um, and I really don't like the labels being of being vegan or keto or this or that, because it feels, it puts people in the scarcity mindset and, you know, a restrictive mindset when, 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 what we want is for people to be in this abundance mindset and think about what they can eat. Um, so I think plant-based is a much better term and, you know, plant forward, vegetable centric, all those, all those things. So agree with, with everything you're saying. And also, the fact that the body is a self-healing organism. I think I posted this on my story yesterday in response to a question. Um, if you put your body in the right conditions with sleep and food and stress management and movement, your body is miraculous. It will heal itself. Like, I'm not healing anyone through my practice. I'm just helping people, you know, I'm helping drive people towards the conditions that will allow their body bodies to heal. And it's something that I, I really stand behind as well. Um, I think so many practitioners these days are pushing supplements and powders and collagen and this and that. And the reality is it's way it's way more simple than that. And we don't we don't need all those things. So I really appreciate you talking about that. Um, 
love that you said what? that. What? It, it, to me, the simpler the better. I just, it, it's a really important thing you've said right there, and I want everyone to really get that. It, I don't take any of that stuff. I don't take anything. Yeah. I, I literally I have my green juice. I love my bee pollen because it's just, I feel like it tastes amazing. Yeah. And if I feel like I have some uh, artemisia, something to kill, uh, any kind of rogue bacteria because I've been maybe a little bit loose with things or I've been traveling, I'll do that. But generally speaking, I don't take any supplements. Um, I don't, I don't totally. It, it's unnecessary, and the, and this collagen stuff that like really gets me. It's, it's <laughs> oh my. one of the yeah, and even as it, having, I don't know. I, I'm supposed to be going through some sort of process now. In my late push my late forties, which is supposed to require me to need to take all these extra things. I'm like, no, actually, yeah. But how yeah. many people have they research done research on who live this way, who have removed the rot from their body? Who you know who eat totally. cleanly, and so we don't have research on healthy people. We have research on, research on sick people. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah, I. It's funny. Like I, you know, honestly turn down. I think like ninety seven percent of brand partnerships that I get for because a lot of these things I would never take, and um, myself, I don't take any supplements either, um, with the exception of you know maybe some digestive enzymes or magnesium or other things, but like you can get, I think people don't realize that you can get everything you need through food. Um, what, what I really struggle with is there is really an obsession with protein, like being deficient in protein. So people are always asking me about protein bars and protein powders and stuff like that. And again, I try to push the message that we can get all the amino acids we need to form complete proteins in our bodies through plants and kind of don't need to have those sort of low vibration package powders and bars and things like that. Um, so I'm hopeful that we'll be able to continue to spread the word on that and just allow people to heal themselves. Yeah, the only caveat there is that you have a lot of um, vegan athletes who are eating these vegan and vegan meats. And th those are really unhealthy, and they're blocking, clogging the body. So the, the idea is not to go toward those things. Rather, if you want some yeah. cheese, go cheese. Go get some sheep's cheese, get preferably raw. Totally. Um, don't, you know, don't do the fake stuff. But, um, but recognize that it's not even about getting it from food. It's about removing the obstruction, the weight of the body. So there's totally. so much. Remember that life force is infinite intelligence. It has the know-how. I said this earlier, and I'm going to say it again because it's a that means it knows what to do. It will, whatever is needed, it will create that. So I'm losing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I have one last question here and then I'll shift it over to um, people on live. And for those of you there, um, if you want to ask, start asking some questions, I'll address those in a second. Um, What's your, what are your thoughts on kind of intermittent fasting, fasting in general? I think a lot of people are concerned with it disrupting hormones. I've personally never had that experience, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts on, on that. I'm going to sound like a broken record right now, but what matters is getting the weight out. So intermittent mm -hmm. fasting will, will relieve the body of digestive um, totally. time and more going, but it's pointless if you're not going to Move the way. See, when we talk about creating conditions for the body to self-heal, fasting is one of the, the conditions able the body to heal very, very quickly. But part of what you, the majority of what's happening in fasting is the self-cleaning of the organism. So the body is able to, because it's not having to digest, it's able to start pulling up and removing, looking for exit things that it's been storing. If you don't give it an exit, then you're going to basically resettle that same way. So it's it's intermittent fasting with the use of bowel cleansing is amazing but without totally. bowel cleansing, it's still pointless totally totally a hundred percent the completely different experience to be had when you're fasting and you're releasing your waste matter you don't feel like you're gritting your teeth and white knuckling it through you feel great you're like well i didn't realize i am not fasting you know it's it's so it's so easy. You're not releasing that waste matter you are white knuckling it you are like not a very nice person to be around you know you're, you're, you're mm -hmm. in that intermittent fasting so if you're feeling that mm -hmm. way remember all you have to do is release that way so if you want to intermittent fast if you want to do any kind of long-term fast even um 
want to make sure that it's coupled with with bowel cleansing. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Thank you. Um, I know we're a little bit over. I know I said 45 minutes, but um, we'll ha address a, a few questions. I'm going to scroll here and see. Um, I think there is someone that says, there's a couple of questions around probiotics. Is this necessary? Are they necessary? Fermented foods? Could we get the same thing from fermented foods? What are your thoughts on both of those things? I'm not a fan of fermented foods and probiotics. I think probiotic means life it that which is brimming with life so that's what we consume when we eat our living food so you want totally. probiotics sprouts you drink your wheatgrass juice you'll have you know that will be true life generating microbial um essential substance that you'll get without mm -hmm. taking it. um i can I, I find that sometimes um probiotics can have rogue microbes in them i am not i'm not um convinced that as good as is reported to be even you know, the very, very, very good ones might be, but um, mm -hmm. um, I don't find them necessary. And totally. this, if you use probiotics, you don't bowel cleanse, you're not going to have great health anyway. Bowel cleanse, you don't need them, and you eat cleanly, you don't need them when you couple that. Mm -hmm. so, I, I feel the same way about digestive enzymes. I find that they actually can, um, you know, we're trying to food combine to accomplish a certain end with the digestive enzymes that we're secreting the simple foods we're eating, but a lot of digestive enzymes blend, you know, the different mediums. So unless you're sticking with the, the, the exact right digestive medium enzyme for what you're consuming, I think you're playing a little bit of a, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's theoretical and we don't like the like visceral. We like to know what's yeah. happening. We like, we like to be certain that something ha is good that's happening, uh, that what's happening is good because we feel reliable. And I find that with these uh -huh. things, people don't really know. They're sort of like, ah, oh, I hope it's working. I think it's yeah. working. Research says it's working, but I can't promise. I can't, I can't tell you I'm feeling something. And totally. That, we, can, we have our green juice on an empty stomach. We know that's working. We know because we feel the vitality upswing, like it's unquestionable. Totally. When you have a great colonic and you remove copious quantity of taste matter, you know you're feeling upgraded. You know, there's no, you don't, you know, you're not questioning it's working. You know it's working. Totally. Totally. And like with all these things, supplements, et cetera, I just like to tell people like, what do you think our ancestors did th thousands of years ago? Like, did they take, did they eat protein bars? Did they eat protein powder? Did they take collagen? Did they take probiotics? Like the answer is no. They just gathered food and um, consumed it. And I think we've lost sight of like what nature has just given us naturally. Um, and I think I, I want the whole world to just reconnect with that and stop trying to find these hacks and shortcuts to feeling better. Um, so yeah, I, I really appreciate you you sharing that because it really is so much more simple than people people think it is. Well, that, that's true. However, let's um, we have to look at if, when when people go back and they have to go back ten thousand years. If they go back to Syrian times or um, medieval mm -hmm. times. They're going to say, oh, no, but what do you mean? Like, we were living so much longer. But, but you know, they, they were living for 35. You know, they say, but that's because, of course, there was refrigerant. They didn't have refrigeration, and they didn't have antibiotics when the rot from everything they were consuming actually started to express in the body in, in, with these symptoms. Mm -hmm. So before error, before error, so we go back to wild man. And then, yes, those the problem is that in today's body, it's not that simple because you're contending with the accumulated uh, – of the ancestry totally. of the years. So we have to take into consideration the fact that we've come in with less than a full deck and we're, we've been consuming food with that, you know, less than a full deck with defunct organs. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mul multiplicity of wham, of, you know, like it's, it's the bad, the wrong stuff is going in. The body was weak for, for too long. The knowledge wasn't there. The, uh, the suppression was making things so it's it's convoluted. It's a mess. But if we yeah. can why why it's a mess, and we can say, okay, well, here's here's the shortcut solution, which is there's the the because the organs were weak, we didn't digest the food that we should have never have taken in properly. So we're holding all this waste. Can we get uh -huh. the waste? The answer is we awaken and release. There's our solution. Now we just have to put it to task and get the job done. It, so it's a simple solution, 
despite the convoluted aspect of all the things that played a role to otherwise cause us to have no way to yeah. escape the, the sort of mm -hmm. result that would come from not knowing how to fix it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And thank you so much for just re-emphasizing the, this awake, this concept of awakening and releasing. I think people focus way too much on the input rather than the output, what they're getting out. And I, I really appreciate that this live really focuses on, okay, if you're going to go on this trend, on this transition and you want to heal yourself, the elimination and cleansing is the most important thing is what what's coming out of your body. Because again, for a lot of people, it's decades, 10, 20, 30 years of buildup um, and getting that waste out and getting that obstruction out to increase your vitality is like the, the most important thing. So um, I know you mentioned this earlier, but for those of you maybe watching the recording later, I encourage you to go on Natalia's website and learn more about where you can get colonics and also check out the enlightener. Um, and if you want, you can message me as well. I've, I went to Gill in New York for years, as I know you did too. Um, I don't live there anymore. I live in LA, but I also have a gravity colonic therapist in LA, which who I think you know as well. Um, so if you ever need resources, please DM me or um, check out Natalia's website as well. Um, yeah, I think that is it. Oh, there's there's a there's a few more questions, but I think we're up on time. Um, if I can put yeah, any last, last um, any any last thoughts you want to share, or um, I would love for you to share like a little bit more about resources and where people can can learn more about your philosophy, um, potentially check out the Enlightener. Any, anything like that? Well, I think um, the website's probably the best, nataliarose.com. And then mm -hmm. at Instagram, it's Natalia Rose Institute. And yeah, I think those are the two best places to go. The, the Enlighteners, um, yeah, there, all the information is there. And you, mm -hmm. can, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, totally. And I saw, I saw you have a masterclass, a free masterclass as well, right? Um, there is a new class, which is a beginner's class that we just put on Instagram. Um, the mastery class we haven't, I haven't left since I left New York eight years ago, but I do it in, within the next 12 to 18 months. Um, I'm moving back to the States and the, the, lots of, lots of good things on their game lined up. Um, so I'll be announcing this. Yeah. yeah. Where are you moving back to New York? No, I'm moving to Palm Beach, Florida. Wow. Congratulations. Super excited about it, yeah. That's awesome. My my dad actually spends six months a year there. Really? So we'll have to we'll have to hang maybe yeah. if I'm if I'm up there. Fantastic. When are well, you, you when are you heading when are you heading there? Um the second week. Wow, congrats. I'm so excited for you. <sighs> well, thank you so much. I just wanted to emphasize again. Um, to all everyone listening and to you, you are such a pillar in this world that we're in. I'm so grateful to you. Again, I read your book when I was 21 and it changed my life. Um, and this is why, like, you're one of the reasons why I'm here today doing what I'm doing. Um, so I'm, I'm so grateful for you and all of your knowledge. You're one of my biggest mentors and teachers and I can't wait to continue learning from you. And I really, really appreciate you taking the time today to chat with everyone. Oh, wow. That's so beautiful. Thank you. You're doing amazing work. And so powerful. I just, we have to get it out into the world as much as possible because that's people free. When they're free, they're happy. When they're free, they can express and live in their creativity and enjoy us. And that's really what we're here for. So. Uh, totally. 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 Well, so much love and safe, um, safe move, of course, that's a big, big move. And I can't wait to hopefully meet in person soon. I would love that. Sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for having Bye. me. A lot of fun. Bye. Have a great night. Chat soon. Bye.